In a previous episode, I've shown how I built my latest raised bed from fence boards. This time, I'll make them groundhog, rabbit, or deer proof by installing removable protective sides. Since most of the sprouts have already grown and they're starting to look like enticing plantlets, I have to make sure to protect them from possibly groundhogs in the area before they get to know that this is a place where they can eat. So I'm gonna put the sides with the chicken wire. Before that, I'll have to measure. I planned for them to be all the same so that I could interchangeably place them in different sides. Now is the time to see it. When I first imagined this protected bed, I was careful to dimension it so that using the system would be easy and practical. Large enough panels to allow for freedom of access once removed, but not too large to make them cumbersome and hard to build. Panels of around 54 by 56 inches seem right to me. It appears to me that I'll be able to do all the size at 54 inches tall or a bit under, just to give a bit of leeway and 56 across. That's gonna make my life a lot easier. Having a standard panel size would make them be interchangeable. Although this was my first raised bed, my plan was to do several more to house specifically the leafy green crops herbivore wildlife love to eat and are attracted by, such as kale, collards, and other cruciferous vegetables, as well as the chicories and lettuces. I bought pressure treated 1x2 lumber to build the frames for the panels. Whenever you are cutting wood, especially pressure treated wood, remember to use a respirator and other protective equipment. After measuring and cutting the pieces of lumber, I laid them out as a square on the ground. I had to fix the corners together and for that I decided to use some leftover short drywall screws. It is a good idea to invest in higher quality exterior rated screws that don't rust when in contact with pressure treated wood and left exposed to the elements. But I was using what I had already at hand. Wood splitting like this is to be expected with thinner wood. So you can't really rush this. You will need to drill pilot holes. I know it's a little bit more work, not as as easy and instantaneous to get things going, but it makes a huge difference. You can't have things splitting in half like this. You're, you lose a lot of strength and it will come apart very quickly. So let's get some a drill bit and drill pilot holes. To be frank, I knew this splitting was going to happen. I did it here to show exactly what not to do if you want a frame that has at least some durability and structural integrity. Drilling pilot holes will take you double the time than just screwing the pieces of wood together. However, it will make a huge difference. If this is the first time you are building something like this and you don't have much experience with pilot holes, just remember to pick the right size drill according to the screws you're using. It should be thinner than the screws. For this design, I've tried to optimize the amount of material needed, so one screw in each corner side is more than enough. Remember to place the two parallel sides of the square either on top or on the bottom of the perpendicular sides. Of course, you'll notice that the square sides act more like a parallelogram, skewing the corner angles easily. To address that, I plan to add triangular reinforcements for this design. Triangles are a very stable shape and adding corner bracing by using the off-cut lumber pieces would make these frames stable. I would need four corner braces for each panel. I cut them all to have the same size, although that is not strictly necessary. It just makes the whole design more pleasing. I cut the ends diagonally at 45 degrees. I also didn't want them to be just ordinary straight pieces. To enhance the design, adding detail and to make them more harmonious with the curved pieces in the bed structure, I drew out notches and cut them out using a jigsaw. A band saw would be even a better tool to do this. But be careful and always mind your fingers. I then drilled pilot holes on each end. 
on top of the one end and diagonally on the side of the other. This meant that I could fit the corners neatly on the overlapped size pieces and affix everything together with screws. All in all, I would need 12 screws for each side panel. Once all the corner braces were installed in their respective place, the panel gained strength and stability and was ready for the next step of covering them with chicken wire. The notched corner pieces also turned out to be handy to maneuver the frames, serving as de facto handles. Coming up in the next block, I'll show you how the completed beds turned out right after this commercial. If you're loving the video and would like to help me produce more, you can purchase an original painting from my Etsy shop or support me through Patreon. Your direct support is the reason why I have been able to produce two episodes a week during the spring, so thank you. Now that the frame is done, at least in concept, I need to put the chicken wire around it and create the three other sides and hopefully this will keep out the animals from eating the kale and the swiss chard and the other greens. I am banking on this idea. I think it turned out really nicely in terms of how it looks visually but only time will tell if it's effective. I bought a chicken wire roll that was 48 inches wide. It had the one inch hexagons, which makes it impossible for smaller herbivores like baby rabbits to go inside the protected raised bed. I knew I could stretch out the 48 inch wide chicken wire over the 54 inch tall frame and that way avoid having to stitch up chicken wire pieces. This would certainly make the process much easier. In a way, making larger panels would have been much more difficult, so I feel like this is the perfect size for the materials. I used a wire stapler to fix the chicken wire to the frame and a pair of heavy shears to cut the chicken wire efficiently. It is a good idea to wear gloves because your fingers will start hurting and the raw wire tips can cut you. All in all, I was very pleased with the way this was turning out. To secure these sides in place, I decided to fashion some wooden latches that would be simply turned to remove or secure the sides. In Brazil, we call these things tramelas. They were very common in the countryside. My grandmother's house had some of them, and that's where I learned the word. I also remember hearing people who talk too much being called destramelados, meaning without a latch. It is funny that I later learned that English had the word untrammeled meaning free from restrictions. A very similar concept except untrammeled is a very classy archaic word in English and destramelado is what you will hear a poor mother call a mouthy son in Brazil. I later learned that they come from slightly different Latin etymology, trave as in wooden beam and tremaculum as in fishnet, but I digress. I drilled holes into the small pieces of wood and affix them near the four corners with screws. I just had to make sure that as they rotated, they would either lock or unlock the side panels in place. Simple but ingenious. I really liked where this was going. And soon enough, with three more sides, I could have the raised beds fully protected. I would finally be able to grow leafy greens without the groundhogs eating everything and without the annoyance of small cages as in my last garden. I would consider this a success. It did take a while to come up with it, but I'm proud of the design. I specifically like the fact that it looks rather decorative, something you would choose to have in a garden, rather than have to learn to live with, such as my previous cages. As for durability and ease of use, only time will tell. 
Leaving our fears to the past will I'm very pleased with the way the design turned out. It actually exceeded my expectations. And part of the reason why is because I was worried that the sides would somehow make things busy or just destroy the harmony. But actually what happened is that I believe the, the sides, the bottom part, it made the proportions right by balancing the visual weight. Now the top is not as top heavy, it seems supported, and there's just nice detail, but just enough, so I think it's a good design. And if you think about it, it wasn't that expensive for the look you get, so I think this is something to consider. Now for it to be a good design, it'll have to last through time. I hope it can last at least five years, I'll only know in time, we'll see.